let's quickly wrap this up with a bit of uh, just some questions in case you don't want to check, you know, uh, fact check with regard or he'll be. Uh, I'll try to frame it a little bit harder. Oh, no questions. Anyway? Can we do a road <laughs> show with them? Road show? Yeah, yeah I'm gonna do it. I have school. to do this again. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, can, can we take them like, to schools, like make it a thing? Seriously, yeah. one can teach compassion and empathy, <laughs> and, and the other can empower. <laughs> He's on the dark side. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <my> <laughs> side. <laughs> you know, uh, there's a, like a group of kids in my head in the school I teach who would love you, mm -hmm. meaning they get they get bombarded and scolded and penalized for being different, mm -hmm. for talking, asking questions, for and someone like you come in <laughs> and tell them, hey, I, I love you guys. It would be like so weird for them. Yeah. <laughs> So, so here's the thing, when, when we talk about like doing like motivational classes and, and motivational talks and things like this, uh, that can be really cool because often it gives people some kind of hope, yes. but you haven't changed the situation they're in. So the depression coming when you come crashing down from that can be even worse. Which is why I hate motivational talks. Because <laughs> it's useless. Because, when, because I, I talk about like, there's, there's three types of motivation, right? There's the, the basic needs, there's the, the, the correct mistakes, and then there's it, what, what he called inner guidance, right? The inner motivation. And we know today how to do that. There's three things, like there's app, there's the uh, autonomy, autonomy in how you do it this mastery and always getting better at what you do and there's the P, the, the purpose. If you have those three, which I'm having a feeling you have here at my belly, one way or the other, that try, try, gives you try the, best. Yeah, but that gives you the inner motivation and that is how you motivate you, you can't motivate anyone. What you do is that you create an environment where you where you highlight the A and the P. That's all you need to do. All you need to do is be there to empower people to do this, and they will do it, right? So these kinds of motivational talks can be really cool because you don't change the system. Can I take my steps further? Uh, see, one problem about taking us around for road shows is that there's only like us as individuals. It's hard to share for everyone, and in the end, you want to solve the problems for as many people as possible. But uh, if you talk about empowerment, uh, what you need to do is identify what are the things that individuals can do that they don't need to ask permission or get resources for. Yeah. Like for example, you want to get you to be a doctor. No, not that. You have to go through the medical program because you need to go through the practice and you have to pay a lot of money to go through that. But let's say you want to draw. That's easy, and press the paper and just start drawing. And all you have to do is show them this is how you start drawing, this is how you improve and drawing, and so on. So anyone who goes to the process can do that. There are uh, skills which will take some resources to learn, like learning this instrument. You have to buy the instrument. There are skills where you already have yourself, you just need to practice yourself. And perhaps the solution could be as simple as putting up YouTube videos and telling them, okay, if you want to do this career, this is how you start. You want to do this, this is how you start. Because the people who are very sure of themselves, they got there because they learned to learn by themselves. And it could be as simple as telling people, this is how you use Google to find out how you need to learn something. I, I started programming when I was nine. I started my first software company when I was 15, in high school. Um, I dropped out from university. Uh, now, just a year ago, my university called me and then they asked, oh, you're, you're doing so good, you're ranked right number seven. Can you endorse us? <laughs> I'm not kidding. So I, 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 so I thought about it for a week and then I responded, you know, I'm, I'm very sorry, but I can't do that because everything I am today is because I dropped out and <laughs> I had a great fortune of having a great mentor. I know why I'm here. It's because of him, right? Because 
you have this like one person that gives you the passion and the the questions to drive you, and that's all you need. And I didn't get that from university, so I couldn't endorse it. That was like that would be a lie. I, I, I strongly believe I'll get that call one day as well. I wait for that call. Yeah, it's like, sorry, <laughs> cannot. And, and I like what Hume was so like framing the things. It's like, I, I didn't want to hear the other side. So is not saying that this is the only way. I think that's, I think, I think that already got us into a lot of trouble in the past. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's correct that there's certain things that the exam and the grading is, is important, the memorizing is, is important. I, I wouldn't want a doctor who feels that I, I should just ask for forgiveness and not for permission. <laughs> I've been doing this procedure the same way in the last six years. I think I'll try something else. <laughs> My, you know, test it out. Uh, or, 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 or even an aeroplane engineer, for example. You know, oh, you know numbers. Who needs you know, to do modeling? <laughs> right? Um, but there's a balance that, 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 that that's crossed a certain tipping point. You know, the whole industrial revolution, like I say, the legacy of that. I mean, prior to the industrial revolution, People were educated in different ways, you know. Uh, it's not really. I, I don't think we need to. I don't think it's wise to almost like look to the past because again, even for us to disrupt education. I mean, myself as well, my personal experience. Uh, when I do bring it up to my parents, oh, I want to disrupt their education. So we need to change something, and then they look at me and go, "Well, you went through it, and things are not fine." <laughs> and that's a very hard like sort of thing to to, to counter. It's like. No, <laughs> you know. Um, so, so it is difficult. It is hard. But honestly, if it was easy, it would have changed by now, isn't it? Right. So we would yeah. we wouldn't have to beat be this meet up and stuff and so on and so forth. From what I gathered, and again, uh, and you can observe such an organic experience, the cross pollination and stuff. Uh, for me as well, it's been like just really raising the awareness of all the different points of view. Uh, and, and I really like how Ricard framed the whole thing, took, took a really step back and said, you know, at the end of the day, again, it's not recap, you know? The language part is important. Look at math as part of the, as part of the language. Uh, because it's very funny when I, when I sort of like explain the whole Sir Ken Robinson thing and say like, uh, you know, how, 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 how he found the dancer and stuff. And I shared this with some of my friends who I felt was quite progressive at that point in time. And I still think they are actually. But they posed me a very interesting question like, you know, if you do start a radical school and you're like, Focusing on, uh, basically, they couldn't wrap their minds around the idea of you know my kid is standard three and he loves to play games. That's his passion. Do I just let him continue playing games? Like how about math? <laughs> you know. And, and, and now I realize that no, no, no. It's, it's yes, the passion is important, but there, there is some basic math that you need. That there is basically, pardon the pun. <laughs> uh, we need to come to an agreement that there are a certain benchmark. Or a certain level, and I hate the term again. That a certain grade of minimal, uh, what's the, what's what's the, the communication layer needs to be established yeah. somewhere. Yeah, the, 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 the basic skills. And, and, and the interesting thing here then is that obviously you can just learn English for communication. Yeah, and there's a there's a cutoff point. Then there's a cutoff. Then there's a next level, which is the it becomes a craft. That means I want to do writing yeah. as a profession. I want to I want to write poetry. I want to you basically take the language and you take it away further, you know? Or even math, for example, yeah. you have basic math, then you go into weird math, you know, then you start with the finances, you know, the whole branch of what grows up there. I think the abstract algebra. Yeah. That was yeah. All right. the <laughs> differentiation yeah. and shall oh fuck oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> And, 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 and that's the thing that obviously gets people a little bit like, oh, concerned yeah. about the passion thing and, and so on and so forth. So I, I think that one is relatively easy. Mm. Because I, as like Daniel and, and my other, uh, the other kids, uh, has anyone explained to you why you learn math? <laughs> has anyone told you, like, oh, we do this because, yeah. or we do, we, 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 we do history because, it's like, no, right? Oh, this is a big, big one there. So, <laughs> so I, I actually think that we should borrow some ideas from video games here. Because if you look at video games like World of Warcraft, they are excellent at motivating people oh, yeah. to do exactly what they want. <laughs> and they teach really complex things. Yeah. And, 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 uh, yeah. 
memorize everything. So, so how does it work? So how does it work? Basically, if you haven't played this this kind of game, you have silly treats, right? It's like you can do like ice magic, or you can like be really good at bashing people. But what are you gonna look at? You're gonna look at the skill trees and say, what's at the top, mm. right? Oh, I want that. <laughs> what's the fastest way to get there? How do I get there? Oh, I have to go through here. Oh, oh okay. okay. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna do this because I'm gonna get there. Yeah. And because it's hard to, the higher you go, the harder it is. The fewer there's gonna be that yeah. has done the same thing. Mm. So when you're playing this kind of games, you get like, oh, okay, you know, I can do this thing and I can go really high. Or I can do a whole bunch of stuff and go really wide. Mm -hmm. So you can choose, do you want to be a generalist or do you want to be a specialist? Mm -hmm. And it's all pool based. It's all based on, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I want to reach here, so therefore I'm gonna pull the next level, right? Why am I doing this? Not because of the instant gratification, because it's damn boring on its own. So I'm doing this so I can get to here, right? So there's, there's a bigger picture, there's a bigger story behind what it is that you're doing. And I think we need to borrow from that in education and learning, because kids get that, because they, you know, you guys do this like every day. Then you're gonna advance kids who's like, oh, there's a, there's, a, there's a store in China that will level up my characters. <laughs> right. Pay them some money. Yeah. So, so <laughs> mommy says I can yeah. pay one hour a week, so I'll just pay these numbers. You are not talking to my son. <laughs> I definitely believe it comes back to what you said, that uh, the, the grades really are about feedback. It's, it's not that it, the, the, the grades should be top secret to you, it's that, that once you have them, they're not important. Because what's important is your portfolio. When you go, it's like, this is who I am as a person, and this is what I can do for you. You have a problem, I can solve it this way. Right? My grades are not really all that important. It's a diagnostic tool. It's a diagnostic It's a feedback. The grades and exams are really important for that. Mm. But you know, I think that's I, I think that's a huge shift as well to look at exams and grades and tests as a diagnostic tool. It, yeah, it's, 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 it's just a way for you to figure out because again, you know, in, in an ideal utopian world, you have one teacher and two two students. But no, you you still got to grapple with a bit of the the industrial thing or rather the shortage of teachers and stuff. So look at it as differently. Tests and exams should be regarded as a diagnostic tool to yeah. help teachers or facilitators plan things better or plan, you know, sort of say, oh, you know, let's say if you are weak at math, then you have a conversation. Okay, why are you weak at math? Is it because uh, the way I'm teaching is wrong or is it you're just not interested in math? If you're really, really not interested in math at this point in time, cool, what are you interested in? Right. Let's, let's, let's focus on energies there. When you eventually find a need when you go, Damn it, this, this job needs advanced calculus. Yeah. Then you 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 yeah. be more motivated for I need to learn advanced calculus now. Whereas if you're totally learning it just because it's part of the syllabus, <laughs> part of a plan, and you're not getting it in context, and again, there will be people who are comfortable with that. They're like, oh yeah, I can do advanced calculus, but they are also the people who are like, I just can't learn this at this point in time. That's important. Yeah. I, I can't learn this at this point in time because I just can't see the purpose of this. Like moral, for example. <laughs> <laughs> so do something else. Yeah, exactly, right? You know, instead of like, I still remember, and, and, and here is where I bring to the next point, uh, let's, let's share a little bit. And, and that's something that I, you know, even from a young age, it was tough because history, man, you know? Um, we had a big textbook. Okay, here, here, here's a real story. Uh, starting with, is it SPM? Is SPM history? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, PMR. 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 I can't remember. Anyway, we're learning history. We're learning history. <laughs> right, and we had the main and, and we had the main textbook, the official syllabus textbook, which is verbose and long and, and, and drags on. And the school made us buy a supplement. It's almost like the point form version of the textbook. <laughs> you know, and and, and and it's all like you know the, the, the teacher will tell you, okay, for your whole you know you need to study this chapter, but I will use the supplement to teach because. It's just shorter, because there's no way we can go through the whole syllabus if I use the long version, the official textbook. And then, uh, so, 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 so the plan was supposed to be used as a supplement, and our teacher goes, actually, this supplement is not good. <laughs> there's another one which even shortens it even more, and just com compiles based on the past year's papers. <laughs> all the points, that, these are the only points you need to, to memorize. <laughs> 
in order to get the grade. And I'm like, what's the point? So, 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 so that's one thing I noticed. Like, the textbooks are like so short. And my daughter will burn to Twilight in three days. <laughs> you know, it's like, if you read Twilight as fast as you read this textbook, you can do the whole thing in a week. <laughs> you know, just burn through the textbooks and be done with it. I, uh, it's just amazing, yeah. right? But they are written so uninterestingly <laughs> that it's, it's just amazing. And, and, yeah. uh, one thing I noticed uh, studying in America was that textbook writers uh, they make very interesting textbooks. They're actually writers. They're not putting that point form. They actually figure out that someone's reading it. They try to make it fun. One of my favorite examples was from a psychology textbook. They talk about uh, the four uh, drives of humanity. What the four things that makes people do things. The four apps, they call it. And it says that in textbooks. Fighting, feeding, fleeing, and mating. <laughs> no, it doesn't make all of them. Yes. 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 <laughs> and this was in an official psychology textbook. <laughs> but that's, a, that's the thing. I find that humanities textbooks are more fun. It's, I don't know whether it's just because, but you know, uh, they, they seem to have a bit more liberal sons in terms of writing textbooks and stuff because of the humanities. <laughs> it's not really shy. And maybe what we need are good writers. People who can Oh, yes. Yeah. Is that I, I, I know something, uh, a, a friend of mine is, is also a professional speaker, and when she explained to me the, the storytelling model, like there's this model for how to tell stories, and it's been the same for the last thousands of years, when I learned that, I was like, wow, yeah, I can do my tech talks with that model, and people find it more interesting. So, but then you have to like combine science and arts and stuff, which is like scary. Yeah, you know, left brain, right brain. They should you know, be separate. <laughs> they they don't belong in the same skull. They shall never be combined. Yeah. And, and that's why so there's a lot of that stuff going on. There's like this, there's some mystical divide that yeah. I don't get. But, but that's why I'm very excited about this. The, 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 I mean, glimpses of it, of where technology is going, especially with the recent announcement by Apple about iBooks and how they're. You know, they're, they're, they're giving, they're empowering the teachers now to basically say, here are the authoring tools, you can even go and write your own textbook yep. and distribute it through the platform. Again, it's, it's really like where the puck is going to be. There's still a lot of interim steps, there's still a lot of progress that needs to be made to get to that level of almost like teachers figuring out the class, figuring out the, the student dynamics and almost like say, you know what, I'm going to create a textbook customized for this environment. You know, customized for this particular uh, kind of class, class classroom there, and, and and the tools are easier and easier to use. Uh, if you think about it, it's like why why can't why can't a, why can't the teacher just conduct a class in Facebook where it's like you know here are all the interesting links, discuss your post questions there, I'll answer them immediately, and the whole class can see and discuss because obviously in a classroom in, in a classroom environment, for these students, you can't just say anybody got any questions and everybody knows. Like that, it's just not, it just doesn't fit into that. Uh, I don't know how long is a, a class period, 45 minutes or something like that. You know, you've got so many things to do. But in a Facebook environment, again, it's also already your self-paced learning. Uh, you can just log on anytime you like, and you only follow topics that are interesting to you. It, it, interesting to you, and you can have discussions anytime. Yes, so that's, again, as a technologist or somebody who embraces it, you can see where it should be. And, 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 and that's why we really need to have the parents, the youth, the educators, the technologists, and stuff, uh, and crowdsource this and, and see what we can do and, and help out. And that's where homework comes in. Um, there's homework? Of course, there's homework. There's always homework. This is any right? And there's homework. Okay, sorry. Yes. I have a question. Yes. Between and um, so yes. said, do you think you could come up with guidelines for uh, ten-year-olds? Or seven years as well, how to learn programming and gaming. Oh, that's already available. That's easy. Really? Yeah. But also like individually, like for my kids, in, in their case, um, they like mentors. They like to have that interaction with right. people. So I, will, I, I think I talked to Buzz about this program for my kids. Um, they took part in Google Game Jam the last time, and they're really, really interested in doing this, but they they are more comfortable in an environment where they bounce off yeah. 
Right. But even though it's a, they're very comfortable adults, so they yeah. can bounce off. Yeah. That. You know, I want to have something where we do have some like semi-structured. We have some structured activities, but I want things that, like you said, games teach them math. Games yeah. teach them physics. Oh, yeah. How much code do I need to do this? No. Like, yeah. How you do it? So they start as a scratch. They have the little things, and percentage. they yeah. ask yeah. a lot of questions, but. Um, they're very comfortable, especially the middle child. He's very comfortable with a mentor. He's right. more familiar with that. So I, I talked to Buzz about you know the unit that they're working at to do a whether it's a Saturday program, they or whatever, for them to come in and they they had so much fun that time and they really want to learn it. Like I said, they learn from a mentor. They like that concept because they don't get it in school. Um, you know so. That's something I, I wanted you guys to think about. Um, not like really lecture style, but something that that um, also partly for me to show myself. Look, they're still learning math. They're still learning physics. Yeah, it's almost like a mentorship. Yeah, they're very fascinated by because I guess maybe from what I do and everything else, they um, they deal with a lot of adults. You know, the artists that they are, they're all much older, and and you know. The buzz and, and all the others is so they're very comfortable with this idea of oh this, no you've done it before yeah and then they'll ask you lots of questions <coughs> and then my so, elders so, will try and break yeah. it but so um, the thing is that that the, the the internet has changed all this mm. yeah because in in terms to begin with in terms of programming for kids uh, well when I started I did the the, the text way when I was nine. So if that worked back then, it should work now. But if you want to do it the easy way, the easier way, there are two programming environments that I can really recommend. One is Scratch, yeah. and, the, and the second is Alice. OK, yeah. Which we... So both of those are like graphical ways of, of learning uh, how to do programming. So both of those, I would that guess, are good for one, one, because obviously I have three. So they all have different ways of, of dealing with it. The, the older child, uh, Jamie, he really loves, he wants to know the code side. Right, the, the text stuff. The text stuff, because right. that's what daddy learned way back when. Right. Um, and, and so he's very fascinated by all that. Yeah. Um, he finds it easier, of course, not to learn from your parents. Yeah. But having a spend, because he's much more comfortable with his mentorship. No, exactly. So I think what Leah is trying to say, and, and this is something that actually I'm also quite interested in. Is real mentorship, yeah. As not in like, lecturing. Not lecturing. Yeah, it's yeah, almost yeah. just really just mentorship, and right. and, and, and that was something that I was toying around with as well because it's like in a school of the future. That's just me. And, and this, and this, and this part of assignment, right? Um, okay. In a school of the future, right? You're going to have a bunch of kids, and, and basically you subscribe to Sir Ken Robinson's you know, your element and stuff. Uh, customized learning, uh, inclusive learning, and customized learning. That, 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 that's that's more focus here. You're gonna have a kid that, that's gonna be like you. You you taught him the language. They reach a certain. They they reach that level where they can burn through twilight in a, in, in two weekends, right? And they just and they just love learning. And you give them Wikipedia, and oh my god, they just go go nuts, yeah. right? And then they're like, oh my god, Khan Academy. Jeez, you know, they're just branching out on their own, you know. And every now and then, obviously, there's a checkpoint with you as a parent, right? And hopefully, again, in the future, it'll be like hopefully. You know, you'll be able to support them and just still be the all-knowing parent for I don't know two years, three years. Again, we're talking about an internet-enabled generation of kids. Probably about eight yeah. years old. Or eight years old. That's but, pretty much it. <laughs> but if you follow the what's the guy's name again, the law of whatever, it, it, it gets shorter and shorter. In yeah. fact, you know, it's, it's quite possible that more uh, slow. Yeah, you know, it, it's quite possible that by the time they're seven, yeah, like you said, eight, yeah, seven or eight, right? That's when they'll be like. I'm just leave me alone with the computer. I'm going to learn all these things all by myself and stuff. And then there's a checkpoint where it's like, oh, mom, today I learned this, 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 this. And hopefully, you know, eight, nine, ten, you see, yeah, 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 you know, no, 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 no. And then eleven, twelve, you go, oh, shit balls. You know? <laughs> um, and, and and they might and, and just in, and maybe just maybe you got a kid that's like, you know, I, I really really want to be an astronaut or I really really want to do more about uh, 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 quantum physics and stuff. And then that's when you go, you know. And you say, okay, you know, let's take you to the bookshop and find Stephen Hawking's books. And then you're like, oh, I've already read it in my book. I, I've already torrented the, the, the e-book. Yeah. I read through it. I cross-referenced the stuff. But I've still got some questions. 
And then you're like, you know, you know, have you tried Wolfram Alpha? <laughs> um, but that's where the internet will come in. It's like, okay, um, let me just go to this Facebook group. Again, I'm just talking about future, right? I'm just going to go to this Facebook group and I'm just going to say, you know, are there any researchers in this quantum physics field and stuff? And I'll just post a question there and let's see anybody answers it, you know? And maybe somebody will say, hey, hi, you know, that's a very good question. You know? And you basically just say, oh, you know, why don't you friend my son or my daughter and you guys can, you know, talk or proxy through parent. I don't know yet, you know, there's still a trust platform thing, right? And that's beautiful. If you think about it like this, you know, the internet will create a platform where you, you, you basically enable your child as far as they can go, or even as an adult learner, actually, if you think about it, like how, how do you meet people like this problem? Games cost, clueless, what do you do? You reach out to people who are actually doing it. I don't, know, I, don't, I don't understand why people are struggling with something as simple as this. You know, if, if you need to solve something, don't do it from scratch, right? <laughs> you, 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 you obviously ask somebody who's already done it and say, hey, you know, why do you point me, point, point me the way? You're not asking for like, hey, I'm going to sit down and teach me. But it's more like, you know, can you recommend some books? Can you re recommend some resources that I should go through? You know, and, and, and just run through it. And if I've got any problems, maybe you can, you can toss me another bone. And if one teacher gives you some stuff and it doesn't work out, you can find another teacher, you can find another mentor, you can find another mentor. That is the learning process. That is how learning happens. You cast your net out and you find the right teacher, you find the right guidance, but it's not about sit down and download to me. You well, know? let's face it to Angelina's problem. Yeah. Because her problem is actually finding a mentor. Mm. And if you say that the issue is why do you find a mentor, well, we don't have a mentor's catalogue. No, we don't. No, no, no. So no, we don't. Maybe the way to phrase it, because if you say that, okay, the internet is like that, the internet is so vast, so huge, uh, so alien now that people wouldn't know where to look for the internet. And, and this is where and you can might come in. We might want to start doing a, a support network. Uh, and in this case, it's, it's, it's quite, it seems quite natural. I mean, if Ricard says, yeah, I, I don't mind spending 15 minutes interacting with your son. Or maybe we come and say, okay, I, I, I may not have time, but I'll see if I, a friend of mine might be interested. No, I actually thought you know? about it. Yeah, before, yeah. And, and I think we should, do that. we should totally do that. And just, you know, yes, sorry. Sorry, no, I was a bit interested in what practical suggestions they would have mm. in terms of propagating some of the ideas they, they put out here today yeah. in a very practical sense because some of the things you're talking about are a little bit far out there, yeah. you know, not, not very easily accessible for for child who's going to school right now. Uh, for instance, he, he uh, was talking about empathy and compassion. What can be done in schools to improve this? That's very, very easy. Yes, and, and similarly, uh, his, uh, he, whenever, he, uh, whenever he talked about <coughs> any of his students and gave examples, I kept thinking about how I wish some of the teachers were here to <laughs> understand that perspective because it's an uphill battle for me. I can't really go. Well, on YouTube, though. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, because you need that because it's all about perspectives. It's all about knowing. Most teachers are quite. Uh, well, not fool us as much as they just know to deliver a lesson. They just know to deal with the smallest issues. But in the process of understanding students the way he does while conducting a lesson, while teaching the, the knowledge that needs to be imparted, that's something that very few teachers possess, that very few teachers are encouraged to have. So uh, I would love to know what very realistic, practical ideas both of them would have to, to just to start putting it in there in a school system, trial error in, <laughs> in whichever school that's willing to take it on. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first question. Am I correct in assuming that the Socratic method is not very popular around here? Sorry. The what? The Socratic method. Socratic. The Socratic method. It's in Socrates. <coughs> Can, can you guess what it means? Uh, yes. Asking. I can Google it. Yeah. To constantly ask and yeah. people. Constantly right? ask and. No, it's not very no. hard. So that's the thing. When if because the idea the, the, the idea behind it is to get people to think for themselves. I'm not going to tell you anything. I mean, Danny gets super frustrated because I was telling him like, you know, was, I mean, last week it's like, okay, uh, you thought, uh, put up a blog for for your hobby. Uh, constraint, you cannot use an online hosting service, meaning you have to actually download set it, up, so it, 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 figure out how to do it. Uh, ask me if you get stuck. 
And you told me like, oh yeah, I intend my password to install it, kind of thing, because you know. But otherwise, you have to figure out yourself. Yeah. And I do that kind of stuff all the time. I would give them like, here's like, here's the big picture that I want you to solve. Figure it out. Ask me if you get stuck. And the thing is, games have solved it. Have you played Skyrim or some of these complex MMORPGs? It's crazy. And then you've got like little kids who's like, I figured it out. Yeah. And like, yeah. I, my, I, you know, yeah. Because like, you ask your dad, you teach you how to do all this. And I know. You know, you level 100. Exactly. Teach kids, you know? So, <laughs> back to the question, actually. And, and right, actually, connected to what you said also. We programmers are super lazy because we have learned one skill to perfection. And that is how to take a really hard problem and break it down into small steps. That's what we do. Yes. We are super lazy. We hate hard problems, so we take the hard one and transform it into a series of small, easy ones. And execute all of, all of which <laughs> is easy to do. And this is something that has nothing to do with programming. It's actually a math skill, right? So, and the, the, the problem is when you have a math problem, you have the problem definition, the method of solving it, and the result. And school, as you know, focus on the first one. It's mm -hmm. like, here's the definition of the problem, blah, blah, blah. And now you do it, and that's the hard, supposed to be the hard part. And it's like, you know, you can check it back and forth to, to get the correct result. <laughs> and it turns out that life is actually the complete opposite. Defining the problem is really hard. It's like, like one of my favorite examples is, is asking as a math question, how long time does it take to fill up an aquarium? How big is the aquarium? Exactly, you tell me. <laughs> Actually, tell me 10 different shapes, sizes. <laughs> Uh, what fish are you keeping in there? Yeah, what, yeah, exactly. You know, how are you going to fill it up? You're going to use a hose, a, the buckets. How far is it to the sink? Where you're going to be rainwater because then you're going to check. Yeah, define the problem. <laughs> Given these constraints, define the problem, and I want to give you me ten answers. I don't want you to give me one answer because that's you know. But how many different answers can you get to that? The method of calculating that's trivial. You know, seriously, that's the easy part. Then the hard part is. Assessing whether the result you get is actually reasonable. You know, if it's going to take three years, that's probably not right. Probably <laughs> <laughs> something wrong. If it takes three seconds, that's probably also wrong. So, you know, assessing the problem, understanding the problem, and breaking it down into its easily solvable components. Because we don't like hard problems, right? We hate hard problems. Do it easy, and then being able to assess the output. I mean, isn't this what we do as professionals all the time? All the time. I don't know. And this is what you should learn. Except the bureaucrats, I guess. Yeah, you know, and this is what you should learn when you when you learn math. This is math. Doing doing this, thinking about the world in abstract terms and breaking it down and you know, and solving it. And solving. That's why so, our kids yeah. freak out. The teachers, because yeah. they be like. Why? Okay. Why are you doing this? Yeah. Can I try and tie some of the things you yeah, can explain? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, all of you are talking a lot about uh, the kids, the victims. <laughs> um, and um, which by implication, or by implication, yeah. it's not just the system, it's the teachers who are part of the system. Whether you're talking about the mentor, or you're talking about the teacher who gives the grades and the students freak out because they don't know why the guy was given an A when he should have been penalized. Well, I know where the stuff comes from. Part of the reason is because, you see, all of us are talking, and we notice one thing, all of us, everyone who's, who's speaking, who's talking about this and talking about the solutions, you yourselves are competent in your field. Generally, our teachers are not. And how could they be? If you go from how, if you go from secondary school and then you go to university and you become a teacher and then you go back, it's like a it's, it's, it's like exactly. It's a loop. It's a loop. It's a, yeah. so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a spiral that, yeah. that, that produces, and then it will it will keep on going. So the thing is that how do you break that spiral? Okay. Yes, we have to change the system. But the key to changing the system is also the teachers. You 
have to get teachers, we have to make those teachers realize that they need to be the kind of, of teacher who is, for example, like you, like you me. And you can only do the things that he talked about doing because he's confident, because the teaching part is not a problem for him. He knows it like the back of his hand, so do you. That's why the, the stuff that you're good at, you have no problem with, you can go on to the next job and say, how do I teach this? A lot of the teachers that we have cannot get past that. And therefore, what they do is, I mean, when I was an English teacher, I was training debaters. And I was also sitting on the, on the judging panel. And they told me, uh, and I said, OK, I'll judge the debate. I said, how are you going to do that? I said, I'll listen to them. And I'll give them points. I said, no, 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 no. no. We give you a form, and then you have to follow that form. Right. And you have to. And then it came to such a ridiculous point that each student had to make two points <laughs> and two rebuttals and demarcate and tell the judges this is my first point, this is my second point. Why? Because the assumption was that the teacher didn't know <laughs> to differentiate which was a point and which was not a point. <laughs> and the same thing extends right through our examinations. Yeah. You check with the examination board, as answers, you talked about many ways of solving the math problem. No. In the Malaysian exams, there's only one way to solve the problem. <laughs> it's a fantasy. It's a fantasy. And it has to be <laughs> the same. Yeah. So teachers are, are saying, oh, no, there's, no, there's only one way. Um, and this is the right way. And they just find the, the, the rubric. They exactly. Yeah. They, 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 they they no, you see, by right, the teacher should be competent enough. You give me your answer. I'll look at it, and I can tell you I can assess whether your answer, right, you know, right, right. take uses method number three or number five or something I've never seen before, but it's reasonable and it's logical, and I'll give you full marks. Our teachers can't do that. Yeah. How in the world? I mean, they're not competent. That's number one. How in the world do you expect them to be to have empathy you can. For, for for the students? It's because impossible. It's already feared. Yeah, it's already fear. Ooh, they should be very you know, scared. They, they can't. The generation of kids. Yeah. Yes. So the whole thing about <laughs> assessment is all that, and that is the reason why your students are freaking out because they're because they're used to being penalized if they do not follow the rubric. Yes. <laughs> exactly. And if somebody else doesn't follow it, well, the, yeah, who does Hilmi think he is to do? <laughs> <laughs> But we need teachers like that who know their stuff. That's number one. They need to know their stuff. And then the second thing is that the professionalism. I mean, uh, what what they need to they need to keep on being role models. That's how. Well, not just being, not just showing empathy. They need to to show role models. You show the same role model because you are learning all the time, and you're not afraid of questions because you're not afraid of saying I don't know yes. but you, at the same time you can tell him I don't know but I can find out yeah. and that's exactly what I want you to do if you don't know you find out but the, our teachers don't have this kind of confidence the moment you say something oh no 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 you're wrong <laughs> right and, and as I said before my like, kid nine years old comes back to school and say my teacher is wrong <laughs> and I told my teacher that and my teacher freaked out. And for the next four years, he was blacklisted by the teacher. <laughs> you can imagine the kind of right. impact it has we, on We on have these talks like almost every day. Oh, yeah. And it's like, oh, you, you were told this in school? Well, that's wrong. It's like a little bit hard for the purpose of the exam, answer that. <laughs> It's not an uncommon story. Yeah. And more and more yeah. parents that I talk to um, bringing this up. Yes, yeah, I, mean, I have to say, um, the excuse that teachers always give is that, let's say I give an answer, it's like, no, you must follow, follow the scheme. The, yeah. You follow have the, to yeah. follow the damn scheme. <laughs> it, it just can't do anything. So the thing is that I, the, the, the teachers are also stuck in the system because yes. they are penalized if they don't do this. Yes. So there's a whole, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, a, it's a whole. Thing. And their job is tied to the 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 four Fs. Yeah. Because if they don't do their job, they they don't get food. 
There you go. Mm. No, but I, but I have, I mean, it, it is not impossible. I mean, um, what, what you said uh, is true as well. It's not just the students, it's the teachers. They've got to have the guts. Yeah. Yes, yes. They've got to have the guts to say, no, the answer is correct. I don't care about the rubric. I'm giving him an A. So the problem is when you have a system that systemically penalizes guts. Yes. 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 Right? Yes. So if, if, if you are consistently penalized because you have guts, and that happens over a long period of time, and not only in education, but in the, in the professional world as well, mm -hmm. you have a problem. Yeah, well, you either break, you either, you either stay stubborn, you stay persistent, yeah. and you break out of it, and you become a, and you become a, and you become a case study, yeah. or the system breaks you down, and you become disillusioned and dispirited, and so you're wondering why you're stuck where you are today. All these collaboration, the students, who, the, the students who graduate from the system are not collaborative. The teachers who are supposed to teach that are also not collaborating. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anybody else want to add to this? I have one thing. Yes. Oh wow. Okay. The more, I'm sure you can agree with this, that the more we learn, the more we know that we have no clue. <laughs> On the flip side, the less we know, <laughs> the less we have, the less we know that we don't really know no. anything. <laughs> Meaning, people who don't know anything tend to seem to believe that they know all the stuff. And that is a problem, especially if they are ministers of this or that kind, <laughs> who have no clue, but they honestly, sincerely believe that they are really good at what they're doing. You know they're going to deport you, right? <laughs> I know. I, 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 you know, I've met. So I'm already out of the country. Yeah. Yes, guys. Okay, that's right. I think two action plans, in my opinion, I think one of them, me and we've been talking for years. One is the career video. The what video? A career documentary video. Yes. To, to actually get the new people to talk on how to get where they are now. Yes. Oh, we're working yeah. on it. Yeah. So, yes. oh, we should open. Yeah, we should open. Okay. Uh, because the technique is checked public how to do it okay. in the way they did it. At least the students can get pointers and guidance. So that's one. Especially for, for field that are not rigidly uh, structured, right? Uh, creative and IT and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, second thing is that probably the mentorship. I mean, we have been, been asking you for that. Uh, I'm, I'm really into it as well, but if possible, uh, once the new case is done, if we can actually do it okay. on, a, on a fortnight weekend or whatnot, that would be good. I'm actually already mentoring a whole bunch of kids. Yeah. Uh, but they don't, I mean, obviously they don't, I don't officially call it mentorship, but there's a bunch of kids from one academy who I went and talked to them and stuff, and then they reached out to me on Facebook. Yeah, I mean, they're friends. So they ask me stuff, I answer them. Uh, sometimes they ask me really, really hard stuff, and I just point them resources and stuff. Or sometimes I just poke them up to other people. And I think those of us who are here tonight, it's, it's, it's a give and take, you know? Um, we gotta contribute back to solve the problem. As in like, I think you're in an educam group and stuff, let's say Leah or whoever it is, uh, the job is to obviously spread the message out more and more. Uh, parents who are struggling with the system, you are ambassadors of this movement. You gotta, you gotta talk to them, you gotta empathize with them, you gotta tell them that, hey, you know, are your kids really doing that poorly in school? And, and, and be interested to actually say, what, you know, you know maybe, maybe you need to explore other channels and stuff, maybe you need to talk to some, some, some people, or maybe explore, say, you know, maybe you meet a very angry parent who's like, you know what, my son just plays games all day. Or my son just does filling blank here all day, doesn't care about his studies. And you 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 can act as an ambassador and say, hey, you know, have you seen this move? Have you seen this video? So can run this and all that. See, I mean, if he's doing this again, it's a it's a I don't want, I don't want to generalize and just say, oh it's always music, or it's always art, or it's always it could be anything. Honestly, you know, my son just like to be a star something. <laughs> there could be something there, you know, and, 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 and as as conscious as a conscious movement here, we are a conscious movement. <clears throat> Um, again, you know, uh, it's, this meetup is, is exactly for this, right? We're going to be sharing all these things. We are, we are so opinionated. We, we, we've gone through the system. We've dropped out of the system. We've stayed with the system. We are working. Where's she? We're she working with the system. The dots are there. I, 
like, like, like you say, when you start researching into something, like for me, when I started at like, I just want to find out is there a school I can send my kids to, <laughs> right? Or is there some sort of program that I can send my kids to? And you know, how deep does this rabbit hole go? <clears throat> um, so, homework assignment is simple. <clears throat> well, relatively simple. So, first is that, again, you know, do you all, are you in agreement that in order to really solve this problem, we have to be part of the solution? It's not just throwing ideas, it's really like, you know, if, if Leah reaches out to me and says, hey, you know what, my, my kids like web design, do you think you can help them out? I would say yes. Can you? Of course. They have their own website. I've already, yeah, I, I'm already doing that. I'm already doing it with a bunch of kids. Um, but the skillfulness of this is that, again, a bunch of them, or, or rather a lot of them, are coming from an education system which is, where's the answer? Show me the answer. Show me the answer. You know, because that's just how it is in, in, in the school. Like, uh, I want to design the best web. I want to write the best program. Can you can you can you show me how to do it? What what was the first line of code? You know, what was you know where where, where do I copy? Where where where, where do I copy the solution from? You know, and 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 and, the, and 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 a lot of professionals and I and I've spoken to people with the teach from Malaysia thing. That's their frustration as well. Because it's like you know what I go there. And all these kids are just expecting to be spoon-fed. And that pisses most of them off. Because obviously we are not, you know, we are professionals, right? We, we learn all these things on our own, you know? And, 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 and you basically volunteer yourself that, okay, I don't, I don't want mentoring. And then you have a bunch of kids like, yeah, just show me how it's done. <laughs> and then you're like, well, have you done any research on your own? It's like, oh no, I'm waiting for you to give a whole bunch of links. They're like, you know, then, then you're like, <laughs> Are you really interested in this? You know what I mean? So, if you, in the EdCam group, if, 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 or if you end up meeting something and, and, and we make that connection, we need to be aware of this thing. Because you don't want to be, I mean, if you want to help out, you don't want to be discouraged as well. Because you, you, you need to understand, and, and, and thank you guys for really sharing this, because you really drag it, drag, drag, drag it out, you know? The fundamental core is already broken. Um, chances are, when you do say, end up saying, okay, I want to help teach or whatever it is, and, and that's a problem that the teach from Malaysia is facing now. They're sending these professionals to schools in the weirdest places. And like I said, you know, they go there and the kids are like, just blankly, we are ready to receive your orders, <laughs> our grand overlord, you know? And then, and, and then you start asking questions and they're like, you know? Uh, the first time I went to one academy, it was the final year student graduating class. True story, and I shared this one before. I go in there and say, okay, you know? Uh, I'm all fired up and good at that. Okay, you guys are going to graduate. So how many of you are going to, you know, after you graduate, you're going to, you're going to go for work right now and just earn your, you know, earn your money and make, make, make a living for yourself? Okay, how many of you are going to further your study? Because, you know, you like studying, you're going to do a master's now, or, you know, you find out that you, you just want to double degree something else? <laughs> how many of you are, okay, how proud, you know? How many of you are planning to just, Live with your parents, continue getting your handouts, you know, and, and figure out what to do, or just maybe run the family business. Like, okay, how many of you are alive? <laughs> you know? It's tough. And, and, and when you realize that at, at that level of high education, they are like that, you know? And, 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 and that's where early intervention comes in. You know, if your kids, if, if we do, if, if, we, if, if you are agreeable to like, even just try out a mentorship thing, right? Where it's like, oh, you know, just, just touch base and stuff. You have, to, you have to realize that there's this thing that you're gonna to have to deal with, and you gotta be a bit skillful, you know. Yeah, you run out of tape. It's okay. Yeah. The rest of the thing I say is, 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 is relevant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm already like beyond my capacity to yeah. stay awake. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna cut it short. So that's the call to action. Uh, how? What, what do you think about this? Yes? No? What exactly? What exactly do you want us to do, Wuhan? It's no. It's then, really then, that's, that, that, that's the research work you have to do right now. Um, yeah. So basically, yes, we want to form a support network. Okay, we want to form a support network. Honestly, education is not just for kids; it's for adults as well, or even just fresh grads or whatever it is. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> let's, let's let's just be helpful as professionals. You know, and and, and I have been already doing this through webcam. People come ask me, I need this other person, I need that person. I point in the right directions and stuff, and they just connect and stuff and so on. So on. Maybe we can extend that to, 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 to the children. I, I, don't, I don't see why not, <clears throat> you know? But be skillful about it. So that's the first call to action, and let's try it out. Um, the second call to action, which is, 
I share with Ricard already. We want to take this further. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what direction EduCamp is going to be. But from just talking to some of you all and just bouncing the ideas, it seems like in you know inadvertently <clears throat> we're going to either have to. Well, obviously we're going to continue supporting like like, like teachers like Sonali or Yomi in whatever capacity. Like if you all invite like if you all invite us to come and speak to your students and stuff. And I, I I'm always available. Uh, I hope that you all here as well will be also available if. You know, she wants to reach out to hey, you think you are really smart in certain things. Can you come and talk to us? You know, I'll, I'll get a bunch of students who are interested in programming, or I'll get a bunch of students who are interested in, in, in design. Uh, <clears throat> if you want a musician, I can get you a musician. <laughs> you know, if you want a copywriter, I can get you a copywriter. I, I, I can help connect things up. So we're going to continue doing that. But to really address this thing and to really create a new syllabus or to create a new paradigm in education is inadvertently looking like we have to start our own school. Close. Or yeah, I hate labels, but <clears throat> whatever it is, <laughs> but we gotta do it, and we gotta start with a name somewhere. So I'm just gonna call it school, you know? Um, Learning center. Learning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, <clears throat> and the homework is like this. The homework is like this, right? And I'll, I'll continue sharing this with the, the the exact time frame. Not quite sure, but again, the the dots are there. What I mean by dots is that I think there are people ready to fund this thing. I think there are people who are ready to help facilitate this thing, but we need to have the business plan. Yeah. And the business plan obviously needs to be a collaborative effort. So the challenge is like this, <clears throat> or rather, if you prefer it, the, the, the project brief is like this. Imagine the world has been wiped out by some apocalyptic disaster, there's only a bunch of us left. Like uh, games. You know, it happens to be us. <clears throat> Blank, can blank canvas, there's a whole bunch of kids waiting for a classroom or a class or a school or whatever. Don't limit yourself to, okay, don't limit, and, and I agree with Leah, don't limit yourself to a school. Maybe it's not a school, maybe it's something else, I don't know. Learning in the cloud, maybe it's kind of academy sort of thing, but what we need to figure out is to address the problem of young parents, which is, I've got my kids, I, I, I've, watched the, I, I've watched the Ken Robinson videos, I've read the books, I've read Outliers, I've read all these things, um, and the awareness that yes, maybe my child is a doctor, maybe my child can, can, can do the grade and the exams and stuff and be, and be an engineer and stuff, maybe he doesn't, maybe she doesn't, maybe she's something else. Blank canvas, how do you design a school that can support left and right brain? And you'll be drawing on your own personal experience. I've already got some ideas, I don't want to pollute yours. And what I will do, and what I will do is that in the future EduCamp, again, we're going to need a few more people. I think a lot of the key pieces are already there. I, like I said, I've got the musician, I've got the copywriter, uh, I've got the entrepreneurs, I've got a lot of entrepreneurs. <laughs> I've got a lot of entrepreneurs. Um, now I've got programmers, I've got game designers, uh, I've got English teacher, I've got Sanali, <laughs> but, um, and more. I, get, I, 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 I don't know the rest of you enough, you know? I got video people and so on and so on. Drawing on your own education background and stuff, and, what, and how your adult learning life has been. And then we're going to eventually arrange a real genius storm. And we're going to say, okay, let's, let's, let's throw some ideas out there. Let's structure a few things. Let's go through a few user stories. Uh, maybe we might branch out and say, oh, uh, more science one, okay, we branch out. Uh, more art one, branch out. More, I don't know, entrepreneurship one, branch out. You know, do a, it's almost like it's almost like a hackathon for a new school system, right? Discuss, discuss, come back again, and then say, okay, how can we all fit everything together and stuff? And then with that business plan, we basically take this and we pitch this and say, I need funding to start a school. I want to pay my teachers well. This is our, this is our metric for success. Da, 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 da. I need funding for three years, four years, five years. Or whatever. whatever. Um, because you think if you establish it here, <laughs> yeah. if you call yourself for school of any kind, you then the you MOE. have MOE, MOE yeah. coming in. You have all the other. Yeah, yeah. that's why I need all of your help. Because obviously I can't do it but by myself. That's the list now. So. Okay. I'm talking to as many people as I can, but there's only one of me. <laughs> That's the homework. Okay. Everybody cool with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. okay, and you can enlist your friends, enlist like-minded people. Um, 
And again, if you need help with anything, post it up. I'll do what I can, we'll all do what we can. I think if we start from just inculcating empathy and, and, and just being conscious of each other and stuff, okay. One person can really do so much, a lot of people can do a lot more. Let's see how far we can drag this baby out of its wherever nether regions and, 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 and just bring balance back to the force, if you will. Yes? Um, that's fine, that's great. Uh, agree with the thick yes. uh, as much as I can. Um, the other thing that, the, the other concern that I have is like, you know, what we are starting probably is going to take time. Mm. Uh, so, but it's, but it's okay, that's yeah. the whole point of every time. Yeah, well, yes. So, I, yeah, I think you'll just, you'll just leave it off the table, I think, because it's something that needs to be discussed. No, I'm not going to discuss it now. What I'm saying is that what I'm saying is that I I particularly have this thing about uh, procedures, uh, and I think you know you know if we if we can get as many people I I already personally know of teachers who are like my dad, oh, but they're stuck in the system. So I'd like to get them together so that they know that they're not. Alone. Yes, let's brainstorm. So let's bring them out. I don't mind meeting them. I don't mind having talks. I'll drag whoever is available to talk. Kiyomi can give a talk again. Lisa can give a talk again. But all these people are like you. I believe that you know if I bring the right audience and say, hey, do you mind coming and share one hour? I think yeah. I think we're ready. I think we're ready to commit. And let's do it. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Sorry to keep you all up.